호주는 낙농과 축산 기술로 유명하지만 사실은 과학기술 수준도 무척 높은 국가 가운데 하나입니다. 특히 컴퓨터공학의 수준은 세계 정상권인데요. YTN 사이언스 차수빈 리포터가 서울대에서 컴퓨터공학을 가르치고 있는 호주 출신의 로버트 맥케이 교수를 직접 만나봤습니다. 함께 보시죠. Computer science contains many different areas, such as artificial intelligence, computer graphics, computer security, and its definition is constantly changing. How will you explain what computer science is? Well, you sure like to ask tough questions. As I say, 20 years ago that was easy. It was a grey box that sat under a desk and you had a display and a keyboard and so on. Everybody knew what a computer was. Now it's not so easy. Now you have For example, cell phones, which are still computers. You have refrigerators that have computers in them. Your car has probably half a dozen to a dozen computers. Even computers have computers these days. It means we don't really know what a computer is. Actually, there's even more fundamental issues. Living beings transform information about the environment all the time. So then under this definition we have to consider them computers as well. And that leads in fact to the area that I mostly work in which is what's called nature inspired computing. Could you explain to me more about nature inspired computing? I'd really like to do that but I'm going to explain it by an analogy. When people first tried to build flying machines they studied how birds fly. This helped in a couple of ways. The first point was it meant that they knew it was possible to build something which flew, because birds do. The second way it helped was that they could study how birds fly and use that in defining how to build planes. Of course, planes don't fly exactly like birds. Birds flap their wings mostly, planes don't. But the thought, but the, many of the principles underlying it are still the same. For example, when the Wright brothers first started to build planes, actually before them, most of the planes didn't work. They ha maybe you know the phrase, what goes up must come down. Well, they used to come down very suddenly, and a few people got killed. So what the Wright brothers did was study how birds stay in control while they're flying, how they bend their wings to control their flight. And that was the key advance they made. It's actually what they got their patents for. And that's what allowed them to build planes that could fly safely. So in what areas do you apply these theories in your own research? One area we've tried to study is the interaction between evolution and growth or development. Maybe you know for the last hundred years or so of evolutionary theory there's actually been a big fight in biology between the people who said that the complexity of biology comes mainly from uh, evolution and other people who wanted to argue that the main complexity of modern uh, biological life comes from development, the process of development. Actually for 70 or 80 years it was a real war. More recently, in the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a little bit of a synthesis, and this has led to the field that we now call evo-devo. That sounds interesting. And how do those findings relate back to computing? Well, we've tried to put these ideas in our systems. Most evolutionary algorithms today, the ones we use in computers today, are kind of like viruses. They just reproduce and evolve. They don't have any meaningful growth process. 
So they can only do simple things like viruses can. But we'd like to build systems that are a little bit more complicated. We'd like to build some systems that are as smart as mosquitoes or fish or maybe even dogs. But all of those things don't just evolve. They also grow. They start off as an egg and they grow out to become more complex. And also they have to solve more complex problems as they grow. What we were able to show was that the problem, that the system could solve much more difficult problems than a purely evolutionary system, some that are very tough indeed. It seems like this kind of research would require scientific exchanges outside of Korea. Could you tell me about the scientific exchanges between Korea and Australia? Well, there's always been some exchange between Australia and Korea. The strengths of Australia and Korea are actually very complementary. In econ economics, of course, Australia has resources, Korea is great at producing technological goods, but also in research. Australia has been pretty good at doing basic research, but Korea has been much better at turning that basic research into products. And I think both countries could learn from each other in that way as well. So I think as we get more exchanges, we're going to get benefits for the research cultures of both countries. Speaking of cultures, how have you found teaching in Korea? Do you find that Korean students have a different approach to learning than Australian students? Well, firstly, teaching's been fun. Actually, regarding students, I think students are pretty similar around the world. The top students are motivated by an interest in their subject, they're dedicated to it, and they just do it because they enjoy it. Other students just go to university to pass their exams and party. So I think the proportion of dedicated students is higher in Seoul there than it is in Australia. But I'm not sure whether that's a difference between Australia and Korea or just a specific difference at Seoul Day. Maybe you can tell me more about that than I can. Anyway, the other big difference is in preparation. I've seen a lot of criticism in the press here about the Korean school system and I know from talking to my students that it is pretty tough for the students and that they have a really hard time but the results are really excellent. The level of students scientific and mathematical background knowledge here is really high so that they can learn new material much faster and much more easily. They understand it better which makes teaching much easier to be honest. Finally do you have any suggestions on how Korea and Australia can foster closer scientific exchanges? Well, I think there's a lot of good uh, goodwill amongst researchers in both sides. Uh, Australians really want to know more about Korea and its research and vice versa. But to turn into interest into cooperation is more complicated. It's partly a matter of funding. It costs money to do international exchanges. So it's important that there's financial support for them. But that's not all. It's also important not to waste money, to make sure that that money goes into exchanges that will actually bring benefits to both countries. That's a lot tougher issue. Actually, it's way too tough for me. So I'm just glad that the experts in both countries' scientific administrations are working on it. And I'm sure they're going to find good solutions. I really hope that Korea and Australia can cooperate more closely in the field of science. Thank you so much for your time today.